All right, I know it's past Halloween, but I just want to review this game because this is my channel and I can review what game I want despite the theme. Now this time on Trash or Treasure, I am taking a look at Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. This game is a platforming action RPG produced by the legend himself Koji Igarashi after a successful Kickstarter all the way back in 2015. Something Mighty Number no. 9 cries at. Ritual of the Night was also published by 505 Games, who also handled the PlayStation Vita version of Terraria. Just thought I'd point that out. Now Ritual was then released on June 18th, 2019 for the PS4, Xbox One, and the PC, with the Switch version coming out on June 25th of the same year. For this review, I'm obviously taking a look at the Switch version. I know the Switch version has a reduced frame rate and long as all hell loading screens, but this is the only version I own and I enjoyed my 45 plus hour long journey. So here's the question, is this game truly a 5 year long wait or is it just another piece of overhyped trash? Let's find out. But first, let's get that plot out of the way. Okay, so just as a heads up, you don't need to play Bloodstained Curse of the Moon or Curse of the Moon 2 in order to understand Ritual of the Night. Both games are in their own little continuity, though I do recommend Curse of the Moon, it's pretty good. Anyways, the game takes place in 18th century England during the Industrial Revolution, which to those who don't pay attention in history class, was started all the way back in the late 1700s by the following people. Thomas Newcomen who invented the steam engine, Sir Richard Arkwright who invented the spinning frame, and later the water frame. Samuel Crompton, known for inventing the spinning mule, Edmund Cartwright, who made the wool combing machine, and James Watt, who made the photocopier. So, that mini history lesson is finally out of the way. During the Industrial Revolution, the Alchemy Guild were hella pissed. The Alchemy will later fade away if humanity evolves. So, what did they do as a response? Did they ask someone if they could try and have both industrialization and alchemy exist together? <laughs> no! In response, they summoned demons from hell. What? How did they do that? By fusing humans with magic, who would later be identified as shardbinders, the shardbinder would behave as like a conduit and thus demons from hell can emerge. Now of course, this doesn't go well and all hell breaks loose in the most literal way possible for everyone, including the guild. The only two known survivors of this are our main protagonist, this Shinoa lookalike, named Miriam and her bestie, Jebel. Now Miriam somehow falls into a deep sleep and Jebel survives a sacrifice to live another day. Fast forward a whole decade later and Miriam is now awakened after her slumber only to find out that Jebel started summoning demons as a way to enact revenge on the Alchemy Guild. Miriam then teams up with a student of Alchemy named Johannes and this lying bitch named Dominique. Trust me, I want to talk about her, but I don't want to spoil anything. So, our band of heroes, mainly Miriam, raid Jebel's castle that he summoned, which is basically like Dracula's castle in anything but name. The official name is called the Hellhole, which I guess makes sense to, since this place is practically filled to the brim with EXP fodder, aka demons. A bit later, we meet Zangatsu, who is voiced by the voice actor of Solid Snake himself, David Hayter. We also meet Alfred, who was actually Johannes' old teacher in the most literal sense of the word, because in this game, Alfred is around 57, I want to say. So keep in mind, back then, that's old. Now, since this is a Metroidvania game produced by Koji Igarashi, there is more to the story than meets the eye. So in order to do so, you need to explore, which is what I love doing in games like this. Just bask in the greatness in areas while the story itself just takes a back seat. Now, like I said, don't want to spoil anything, but just want to tell this. One of the characters we meet or met has similar motives as Matthias Kronfis from Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Well, well, you know, I'm pretty sure this is the second time that I brought up that character in a non-Castlevania review. Now, remember how I said it's mainly Miriam who raids the hellhole? 
I'm not joking. Outside of one section where we team up with Zangetsu, it's solo Miriam from beginning to end. Johannes and Dominique are pretty much our shop vendors. We can buy off them and we can sell them items. Only with Dominique and later another character, we can sell shards. Shards are basically like the souls from the Castlevania Aria duology, where each shard has their own purpose and if we have duplicates or if we have a shard we just don't care about, we can sell them to Dominique for a few thousand gold. But with that out of the way, I say we move on to the gameplay and my god it's good. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night basically plays like any other Metroidvania game and as soon as the first area there are different weapon types galore from knives to kicks, short swords and claymores to be exact. We of course also have armors and accessories to help increase our defense and other stats. There's also this stone mask which I want to say is a possible reference to the anime series Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. If you stay still for long enough, Miriam would strike a pose, which I guess in the context of Jojo is how people would activate their stance. Keep in mind, I have never watched the anime or read the manga before, so feel free to correct me in the comments if I got anything wrong. Now visually, Bloodstained was made using the Unreal Engine 4, and on the Switch, it makes it look a bit washed out and not as detailed as the console and PC versions. But I say this is still good. We also have this other character named OD, whose full name is Orlok Fahrenheit Dracul, who is voiced by Robert Belgrade, who was the original Alucard voice actor in Symphony of the Night. Now much like some games, we have the optional boss rush mode once we be in the main game. But keep in mind, with the latest update we now have boss revenge mode, where we can play as some not all of the bosses from the main story, on top of a Zangetsu mode, where we can play as the edgy ass swordsman. We do also have the optional DLC called Iga's Backpack, which includes a new weapon and an optional boss fight against the man himself, but I didn't download it, nor have it in general. There are also, to my knowledge, only two optional boss fights, which are repeatable, may I remind you. We have The Revenant, who is basically like the Belmonts, and The Millionaire's Bane, which is basically like a giant middle finger to Konami for reducing the Castlevania series to pachinko machines. So overall, can I recommend Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? I certainly can. From a good story, which isn't that complicated, great environments, a good soundtrack, and a good and balanced difficulty on top of all the extra content, this is easily a must buy. With that in mind, I'm giving Bloodstained Ritual of the Night my score of a perfect 10 out of 10 with my platinum seal of approval. This game was definitely worth the five year long wait and plus, we're getting some extra content in the future. Now, I want to know from you all, did you play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and could you recommend it to a friend? Leave your answers in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and while you're here, consider subscribing to the channel and turn on that notification bell to be notified when I make a new video as well as follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Game Joe. Links are down below as always. For the next review, I was originally going to do a collaboration with Shade Midnight on this game. But that idea has long been since dead. So, for the next review, I'm taking a look at Bayonetta 2. That's right, it's going to be my technically third venture back into this universe. But anyways, I'm, I'm taking a look at the Switch version as well. So, I've been Hover Kid. I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everybody.